When someone asks me where to get a good deal on a smartphone, OnePlus is one of the first words out of my mouth. Since 2013, the company has made impressive phones and sold them at impressively low prices. The OnePlus 5T is the latest in that lineup, and it's also the most expensive one to date. I'm Mr. Mobile, and let's see if it's worth it. The OnePlus 5T is a dead ringer for its predecessor, the OnePlus 5. And if you saw my review on that phone, you'll know that's not exactly a compliment. Not that this hardware is unattractive. It's sleek, and it's slim, and all metal, which those who don't like glass phones will appreciate. And it feels well made, if super slippery. My objection to this design is that it's essentially a repackaged version of the R11S from Oppo, a company that shares a corporate parent with OnePlus. I talked about this in my OnePlus 5 review, so I won't belabor the point. I'll just say it would be nice to see this distinctive company return to distinctive designs. The first area the 5T stands out from its forerunner is in the display. The screen has gotten a boost to 6 inches and a new stretched aspect ratio, though it maintains the same pixel density and AMOLED screen technology. Call me an old-timer? But I really don't mind OnePlus's consistent refusal to upgrade its screens to Quad HD resolution. It helps keep the costs down, I imagine, and I don't think most people really notice it. Presumably, it also plays a part in this phone's solid battery life. More on this in a minute. To slim down the bezels enough to get a high screen to body ratio, OnePlus had to move the fingerprint sensor to the back. If you're one of the folks who hates a rear sensor, there is a consolation prize in the form of the fastest damn face unlock feature I've ever used. There are no fancy sensors here, just some custom software that uses the selfie camera to analyze your face. I have not been able to fool it with a photograph, but OnePlus admits it's probably not as secure as Samsung's iris scanner or Apple's Face ID, so you can't use it to authenticate for, say, Android Pay. But as a quick way to unlock your phone when you don't want to fumble for that fingerprint sensor, I'm surprised how fast and reliable it is. The 5T's other big shakeup comes in the form of a slightly repackaged camera. The primary shooter around back is the same one as the OnePlus 5, from sensor to lens, but the secondary shooter has been swapped out for another 20 megapixel camera, its telephoto lens exchanged for a standard lens, the aperture now as big as the primary. All this is meant to give the phone a dedicated low light eyeball, a camera it can switch to in the dark. Now, I love this idea, but the small pixel size and lack of optical stabilization mean it really isn't good at what it's designed for. The phone's software seems to know this, as it almost never puts that second camera to use, preferring the primary shooter in all but the darkest settings. So I echo the sentiments of Andrew Martinick over at Android Central. I'd have preferred a better single camera to this somewhat mediocre dual shooter. True, that means we'd sacrifice the portrait photo feature, but I can't even begin to pretend to care. Just like every other portrait mode, this one is mediocre at best. My design complaints aside, this is a pretty good camera. It captures pretty quickly, and occasionally even has moments of greatness that transcend its troubles. That's also true of the front-facing camera, which is again the same module from the last phone. And back around back, I was surprised at how well the electronic stabilization compensated for the lack of OIS. This sample was shot before the phone received an update refining that stabilization. I think it was pretty excellent to begin with. Here's a few more samples before we hit the home stretch. Let's bring it home with the tour of the fundamentals. Software performance is almost perfect, responsive to a fault. Oxygen OS is one of my favorite versions of Android. It blends smart features from other phones with original enhancements to give you a device you can customize completely from accent color to notification LED without sacrificing the speed that makes it feel so much more expensive than it is. Voice calls are good and battery life is too. My screen on time ranges from three hours to six hours per charge, depending on what I'm using the phone for. But the important takeaway is that this is an all day, 16 hour smartphone. And dash charging continues to live up to its name. 
I forgot to charge my review unit one night, and by the following afternoon, I was down to 14%. A half hour on the dash charger got me back up to 67%, more than enough to finish the day. And yes, this charger comes in the box, alongside an included case. Factor in the headphone jack, and the OnePlus 5T is basically the perfect iPhone alternative for those in search of more value on the Android side. But the lower price doesn't come without sacrifices. There's no dust or water resistance here, nor wireless charging. There's just one downward-firing speaker. A strange software hiccup means that I can't run the stock Twitter app without it crashing for some reason. And OnePlus has made some big missteps in the privacy arena recently. Missteps it swiftly addressed, but which might still give buyers pause. I'll link the details in the description. And atop those pitfalls, this is the most expensive OnePlus yet, starting just a buck short of $500. In a world where you can get an LG G6 or last year's Google Pixel for less, it's increasingly tough to overlook OnePlus's ever-climbing price tags, especially given its recent two-phone-a-year release cycle. From where I'm sitting, this is the last time the company can hike its prices without a significant upgrade in design or camera performance. Until that sequel drops, though, you'd be hard-pressed to find a phone with the potent mix of power, performance, and price that the OnePlus 5T brings to the table. So I say buy it if you're in the market for a discount smartphone that doesn't feel like one. And that goes double if you can snag the 10% student discount sniffed out by today's sponsor, Thrifter. Thrifter is a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value, not hype. Click that link down in the description to get all the leaked ads and the best deals for Black Friday and beyond, including that student discount on the 5T at thrifter.com. Until next time, folks, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and stay mobile, my friends.